I want to set the stage a little bit. Usually when you go to a panel or a conference, the first thing the person at the microphone says is, please put your phones away. I want you to take them out. Take your phones up, you don't mind. Keep them in your hand for the next part of this discussion. Don't look too much at it. Don't get distracted. But just please, keep it in your hand. I want you to have your phone with you. Because I want to just talk a real briefly about the evolution of that device sitting in your hand. If you go back to 2004, Facebook started. If you go back to 2006, Twitter started. 2007, Netflix started streaming video to Americans all across the country. 2008, a website called Latrac was started in Louisiana that for the first time put expenses online at the state level. 2010, Instagram came to be. 2011, Pandora went and got their IPO and got the funding to start streaming music and change the way we listen to music. 2011, 2011 Snapchat. Some of you are saying, what's Snapchat? Your kids and your grandkids, they use it a lot more than you realize. So you better go figure out what that is. In 2014, something called Checkbook.com started in Ohio. So think about that evolution real quick. 2004, Facebook just came to be. Imagine today, had, can anyone go on vacation or have a meal at a restaurant without sharing this anymore? I mean, yet I had a birthday two days ago. I wasn't going to tell anyone. Before I knew it, 8,000 people knew it was my birthday because Facebook, you all have the same thing. It has changed the way we communicate, and it evolves each and every day. Every year, it's new, a new addition. Twitter, 2006, wasn't even on the radar five or six years ago for most people. Now, media, public officials, they don't communicate without it. The President of the United States prefers to talk to people of this country, whether good or bad, through that venue more than anything else. Change the game over just the last couple of years. Netflix, the streaming devices, how many of you watch shows differently today on your phone, later in the evening, when you get home, after you put the kids to bed because of that? Game changer. Instagram, sharing of pictures, all those things. The game changes and it changes fast in technology. So technology is cool. It allows you to do your business differently. What has been a little dated is how government has used it. Instead of going to an office around the state, grab a number, sit down, wait in line, we'll see you in two hours, take three hours off of work to go get this registration, this certificate, technology hasn't quite caught up to that. The rest of our life, you don't wait in line for a movie ticket anymore, but for some reason you do for a government service a lot of times, technology hasn't caught up. 2008, Latrac was a game changer, it was awesome. But from 2008 to 2018, in technology years, that 10 years is 100 years. Think about what else you were doing in 2008. How many of you were listening to CDs and watching DVDs and we were streaming all that stuff right now? The game changes, look, the see here guy's with me, look, yeah, uh-huh. Technology guys with me. So anyway, we always have to be willing to learn on that. And the person that we have here, when you look in the world of national transparency from a government perspective and how technology can make that more user friendly, not just dump a document into cyberspace, but make it user friendly, checkbook.com is the cutting edge. It is the Instagram of this space. It is the Twitter of this space. It is the Facebook of this space. And it's kindly reinventing itself. Right now, when you go on the track, which is a very cool site, but it doesn't show you anything about local government spending, it doesn't show you judicial, it doesn't show you legislative, boards and commissions are off the grid, only one or two universities are on there, there's a host of other universities not on there. Again, a good site, but it's 10 years old. So in our mind, as we looked at this, there's no better issue that should be a bipartisan effort that can cut through all of this partisan finger pointing and blame game that we see today then let's embrace technology to be more transparent, not just in a way to comply with a law, but so that citizens across this state can, for the first time, feel like they really know what's going on. You know, Treasurer Schroeder mentioned something. One of the biggest issues we have is trust in government. How do you rebuild trust? First thing it starts is being truthful and being, putting information out there. And so we're excited to work with a coalition of business groups and state groups and private sector groups and think tanks and chambers across the state that has joined a coalition to try to bring OhioCheckbook.com here to become LouisianaCheckbook.com. We think it's a great bipartisan opportunity that taxpayers will love. And so when we started thinking about that, what's the best way to learn how to do it? Well, let's go right to the horse's mouth. Let's go to the, to the innovators themselves. And so we called Ohio Treasurer's office and said, can you send us someone down? And they said, we'll send our best guy. You know, why did we do this in Ohio? Um, it wasn't just for the PERG ranking. Um, you know, we were 46th in the nation. 
Um, so let me tell you a little story and kind of set the landscape. Um, Pew Public Polling, most of you have probably heard of it, um, started asking a question in 1958. Do you believe or do you trust your government to always do the right thing? Think about that, 1958, kind of post-World War II, coffee was five cents, drive-in movie theaters were all the rage. Um, All-time high, 74% of the respondents said they trusted their government to do the right thing. You fast forward to today when we're paying $5 for a cup of coffee, we're streaming movies on our iPhones. Same question when asked to the populace, uh, 19% and probably continuing to drop. Um, so a large decline in the trust in government. Now in the same time frame, we went from the space age to the information technology age. The way we access information um, is greatly improved. Everyone here has a smartphone, I would hope. Um, they also asked the question, have you gone online to look for government financial documents? Pretty specific. 65% of folks in 2015 responded yes. And that is gonna to continue to climb. So you've got your declining trust and your role of technology. There's a large gap there. Um, and it's defined uh, by a question of, do you believe your government effectively communicates? Because governments communicate, right? I mean, we, we put out documents, we uh, stream council meetings, and we, we try to do the right thing, but is it effective? 93% of the respondents said no. They don't believe governments effectively communicate. So that was the kind of the, the realm that we the live in, right? The reality of how to make governments effectively communicate. Um, and when you're dealing with hundreds of billions of dollars in state spending, um, which if we can get the checkbook site up on the screen, there we go. Um, it, it's a lot of information to try to decipher. Um, and so Treasurer Mandel was elected in 2010. He started his term in 2011. And we, we started leveraging technology to try to not only improve um, efficiencies within the office, uh, but to build trust, right? Get trust back into government um, by effectively communicating. And so um, one of the things that caught our eye was the PERG ranking. We're 46th in the nation. Um, we, we took a kind of look around Ohio of who was championing transparency. No one had really um, taken charge. And so um, Josh said, well, the heck with it, we're doing it. Um, he's, we looked at what other states were doing at the time, um, the 2000. 13 and 14 rankings. Um, actually, our neighbor to the west, uh, Indiana, was one of the top ranked states. And there was this trend of putting your checkbooks online, um, able to track how your money's being spent. Um, and Stephen said it very well, too. Um, it's, it's not just data dumps anymore. We're not just putting out large files of raw data. Um, it's how to make a website that's you know, searchable, interactive, user friendly, um, and intuitive. Um, so we started developing the Ohio Checkbook. Uh, we knew we wanted those three core principles. I call it the three-legged stool, um, but it's searchable. Um, so we, how do people search these days? It's Yahoo, it's Google, it's Bing, it's search engines. So we needed that same functionality um, on over $600 billion worth of spending, over 160 million individual transactions. Um, if you think about that in an Excel file, it's just, it's, it's crazy. You, you can't, it'd be hard to even run um, any type of macros or reports on it. So Google style search bar, number one. Um, number two, dynamic charting, interactive graphs. Um, you know, Indiana had a couple pie graphs on. Great, it shows percentages of, you know, agencies and budgets and spending. Um, but really wanted a way that when you click into a graph, um, you're actually clicking into the data. It's following the information. Um, and as my chief of staff in the back is clicking around, he's just kind of showing you some of the different um, features. And I could spend hours on this. I know we don't have a whole lot of time, so we're going to keep it a little high level. Uh, we are here all afternoon, so if you want some more information, um, come find us. But um, it took about 18 months to build, um, really from scratch. I mean, we, we pulled in the data. We were trying to figure out what data points we wanted. We were able to um, accurately pull in about 35 pieces. Um, 
and then we launched this. So December of 2014, we launched OhioCheckbook.com. Um, didn't really know how it was going to go, but all of a sudden we just started really receiving positive feedback. Um, first quarter of 2015, um, PERG put out their next rankings. Uh, we went from 46th in the nation to first, with the first state to score 100 points, a perfect score in PERG scorecard. Um, so what we had built was validated as the nation's leading transparency tool. Um, so let me show you how it works real fast. Um, Kevin, if you want to put in the Google search bar, um, start typing out transportation. Um, so it does a, a text query. So it's running. Um, it's going to bring up kind of that predictive search, right? So um, even if you don't know what you're looking for, you start typing it in, it's going to show you. Um, it's going to show you the different funds, um, expense categories. It tracks our chart of accounts. Um, we have appropriation light items, so we're able to track how that money is being coded in the state legislature, exactly how um, you know, they're accounting for it, programs, and then all the way down to vendors. Um, these are vendor level payments, um, and that's another kind of differentiator. Um, so click Department of Transportation, Kevin. So this is going to make sure we can get. So this is showing just over $3.3 billion. Um, once you click into transportation, it breaks it down into the expense categories. So these are your large categories. You can see equipment, debt service. Kevin, if you want to hit equipment. We have subcategories or sub-objects of equipment. So again, it's intuitive. It already breaks that down for you. Um, it follows the money. So here we have $61 million looking at equipment. Um, let's go ahead and do office equipment. So for fiscal year 17, there was only four transactions in Department of Transportation for $2,700. Um, once you drill down far enough, you actually get to the check ledger. Um, so these, these are the individual payments. You can click on one, and it brings up a representation that we chose to put into a personal banking check image. Um, citizens can relate to personal banking much more easily than multi-fund accounting or large Excel graphs. So um, this image right here contains those 35 pieces of information, so the specific check number. Um, investigative journalists or just journalists in general love this because um, before in Ohio, if you wanted to look at office equipment spending across multiple agencies and departments, that would take an individual public records request for each agency and department, and then weeks to months to get that back. Now they have a specific check number, a date. So if they have any more information on this, on this piece of spending, uh, we put a piece of um, a, a contact for transportation. Um, and then if right under the memo line for office equipment, um, it's a neat feature. So this is the breadcrumbs. This is essentially the accounting structure for this piece of spending. So you're able to track it through essentially, you know, its accounting process. Um, and then right underneath where the money is coming from, um, this is where the state legislature, this is the information that tracks it, what fund, the appropriation line item, what program. So really neat feature um, to see. Then underneath, um, this made us a lot of friends in state government, um, but the share feature. Um, this is important that <laughs> we're able to email to a friend in Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, it even has Pinterest. I've never seen a state government financial Pinterest board, but hey, if you, if you, if you want to create it, you know, we can link it. Um, and then we're able to print a PDF. Um, so we'll go up to the top, Kev. Yeah, that's X out, reset at the top. Neat feature, um, again, all the graphs are interactive. So you can see our trend at the state budget level. A little bit, a little up, 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 up. So in Ohio, it's kind of grown as well. Um, and then down at the bottom, um, we like to show just some of those neat pieces of information, highest paid companies, expense types. Um, if you guys want to check this out on your own, I would urge you to go to the FAQ um, and just read through. So you know, the PERG report, they have a lot of criteria. Um, it's important on any transparency portal to explain what's in there and what's not in there, um, to have maybe some supporting documents, um, really just um, a lot of good information for everyone to, to kind of read through and, and get a gist of um, just everything that, that's compiled. So um, last feature I want to show you. Um, Kevin, let's go, um, let's do that transportation, let's get back to that equipment. 
Let's do, yep, transportation. Let's go back to that equipment. Let's do, let's do information technology equipment. So because we go back 10 years, it adds context. So you can see for, in, for IT, there's actually even subcategories. Uh, but for transportation, there's 240 transactions, over $6 million. Um, the ledger's down below, but we've got this year-to-year -year feature. So go ahead and click it, Kevin. So this gives you that historical context. You know, are you seeing peaks and valleys? Are you seeing constant growth? Are you actually seeing cut in spending? Um, not only can you do that within just one department, but if you click this big blue compare button over here, and we click agencies, and Kevin will go down and pick a couple of departments. Um, this is one neat feature in Ohio. Um, I think you guys are working on here in Louisiana, but we're on a, a, a uniform, essentially accounting system. So the state of Ohio homogenized our ERP systems back in 2007. So a pack of pencils is office supplies at the Department of Transportation and same as the Board of Cosmetology. So it's all the same. So we're able to compare specific spending categories or vendors across multiple agencies and departments. See here he clicked uh, administrative services. Um, this is also neat, so you can see green really doesn't count. Insurance, he can go up and click insurance. It actually takes it out of the chart. It kind of consolidates it. So now we're looking at one specific year for information technology across four agencies. We can go year to year. We've built in an average for statewide, but we can also redraw this. It follows the information. It's a very interactive. There, again, you can see the ledger. This is all sortable. It's bulk downloadable. Um, you can download it per like save view, so you could download just this spreadsheet. And the FAQ, you can download um, all individual years. Um, so that's in a nutshell. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, I was talking with a couple uh, reporters earlier, and, and I'll ask you guys the same question as them. What's the number one piece of requested information for governments? Does anyone care to shout it out? Salaries, I heard it, yeah, salaries. It was one of the first things um, that we did at the treasurer's office is um, we put on all state employee and teacher salaries. Um, go ahead and click state employee salaries, Kevin. Um, so we just kind of revamped this. We had an older database um, that was searchable, um, but really we wanted it to create some interactive graphs. Um, so here is every state employee salary for the last five, seven years. Um, there's that check ledger underneath. And if you, just for, you know, laughs, if we search up at the top uh, for elected officials, Kevin, this will bring up all the statewide officials and, you know, I'm sure Governor Kasich won't be happy that I do this and the, ju <laughs> and the judiciary because they're the, you know, the large section of it. Um, but there it is. I mean, you know, now it's, um, it fits that criteria. You know, it's not just that big data dump. It's interactive. It's searchable. It's bulk downloadable. Um, and it creates some context because you're going year over year. Um, so, you know, timeline, we built this, launched it in December 2014. Um, we pretty quickly pivoted to local governments. Um, Josh came to us and said, hey, now that we got the state online, how do we get uh, the 3,900 local governments in Ohio online? And my head was just spinning and um, what we have at the state with this uniform accounting system and a little easier to pull in the data. In Ohio, there is no uniformity at the local level. Schools, we have counties, cities, villages, townships, schools, libraries, special districts. We have 1,300 townships. We have 600 public school districts. We have 900 cities and villages. We have 250 libraries. They can use whatever accounting system they want. Now, the good news is our state auditor is actually a software provider. They have a, a piece of software called the Uniform Accounting Network that creates a, a little bit easier. So there's 1,900 of the 3,900 governments use this one system. Um, schools, for the most part, 90% of the schools still use a really old accounting system, but we're able to um, build in a specific checkbook report. So we identified about um, 12 to 15 data points that we wanted out, you know, a check number, a date, the amount, vendor, and then essentially we want to track their chart of accounts. Um, so we started building out um, an easy process. Um, Josh said, um, I want to make this free for local governments. I want to, you know, pay for it out of our office through some of the, the savings that we're able to achieve. 
Um, we want to make it voluntary. We want to do this the right way. Uh, we want to create partnerships with local governments. We want to see who the leaders are across Ohio of who actually wants to you know, start to build trust and use this. Um, so we launched the local initiative in April of 2015. Um, you know, in all honesty, I, we sent out a letter to 18,000 elected officials across Ohio, like 5,000 emails. Um, I was scared. I had no idea what the response was going to be. I mean, we sent snail mail. We had forms come back. Um, and honestly, I, I was just blown away. The positive response that we had received from local governments right away was, hey, we're, we're interested in this. We want to know more. Okay, so we started working with them. And so between April and September of 2015, we worked with the first um, couple hundred local governments. Uh, we launched the first hundred websites in September 24th, 2015. That date will be burned in my memory forever. Um, and since then, we have over a thousand sites built. We're just approaching about a thousand published. We have 1,300 partnerships. So we're working with hundreds of more governments that go through the process. Um, I manage a team of about a dozen that go out on a daily basis and sit down with school boards and council members and just talk about the benefits of it. Um, you know, building trust. We have a lot of governments across Ohio that are utilizing their checkbook sites to rebuild trust. Um, one of the largest and probably most notable um, cases is just west of downtown uh, or just west of Columbus um, is called the Village of Mount Sterling. They had a city administrator who stole over a million dollars um, from this village, and they only have about a million dollar budget a year. I mean, he was, he bought and sold over 50 vehicles. He was buying campers, and no one, there was no checks and balances. Um, and this, and this town was just devastated. And so um, they reached out to us and said, hey, sign us up, put us online. We not only want to show what he did, but moving forward, we want to regain the trust of our community. Um, and they sent us a file. We're building them a website. And I think we're launching it like next week. So um, there's a lot of cases. I could sit here and again talk for hours on this stuff. Um, please come see. You know, come find me or Kevin um, afterwards. But um, well, let me show you a local site too I, before I cut myself off. Um, so Kevin, if again Google style search bar, guys, this is really important. So we actually build it just to you know, find what site we want to show. So go to like Montgomery County. So Montgomery County is Dayton, Ohio. Um, I grew up just outside of it. It's one of our largest checkbooks. So um, they have seven years, nine billion dollars. Um, this is broken down by department. Um, if on the left hand side, Kevin, you want to break it down by a little funky there. Um, fund, if you scroll down. So again, this is where you can start at the highest level, fund description. So you can start at that highest level, maybe. It's loading, it's just a lot of data. Um, there you can see, um, and you're able to then click through and really drill down all the way down to the specific uh, payment. So all the same functionality on the local sites exists from the state site. Um, and it's really neat. So in closing, um, you stole my talking point on the data dump, so, um, but you did bring up the bipartisanship. So um, you know, transparency is one of those, those topics that you, know, you think everyone should, it, it should be easy, right? Um, there are a lot of, um, I find in Ohio, a lot of officials that are a little scared of putting all this information out there. I can tell you in Ohio, um, once you rip the Band-Aid off, it, it doesn't hurt. Um, it's great to put all this information out there. Treasurer Mandel truly believes that every Ohioan has the right to know how their tax money is being spent. That's why we did this. Um, he did it to hold their elected officials accountable. There hasn't been a big gotcha moment. You know, there isn't any big waste, fraud, and abuse that, um, you know, at the state level. Um, and then bipartisanship. So this was such a powerful moment. Um, but when we launched um, the state's checkbook and actually a couple other events, um, Josh, when he ran in 2010 and won, um, the incumbent that he beat, Kevin Boyce, Democrat, Josh is a conservative Republican, pretty nasty, you know, heated battle, right? Um, when we launched this, we actually asked Kevin, hey, would you like to come be a part of this? Two competing 
you know, elected officials come together after the fact. Kevin Boyce actually stood with Josh and said, I wish I had thought of this. You know, it's such a good idea. Um, and so we've seen at the local level as well, it really is a bipartisan um, issue. Um, and the benefits greatly outweigh any costs. Um, we've got some great third party validation um, from a couple of different think tanks who, you know, hopefully we'll see, uh, you know, some great efficiencies and great cost savings across Ohio. So again, I thank you for having me. Um, again, I'm around. So if you have questions um, that you maybe don't get asked during this Q&A, please come find me. Uh, but we're excited to be here and share our story. So thank you. Awesome. That site's so cool. So there, there was one example I'll give. I was playing around with it the other day, and I went to this little village, township, whatever it was, in one local area there, and within a couple of clicks found the amount of the check that that little village wrote the preceding month for the pool supply chemicals for their little public pool. Now, what, you're, you're, you're the right thinking, who cares what they're pulling? But, but think about if in the, whatever city you came from today, if you could go and check out how much did they write the contract for last week for that service, that bus service, that vendor payment, whatever, and what's the trend lines on that? I mean, I think that's powerful. I think it's unbelievable. So anyway, thank you so much for coming down and sharing that. So, okay, I asked you earlier to take your phones out. I don't know if you were paying attention or not, but I hope you still have them because we're going to try a little interactive PC or we're going to try to be tech savvy to the best of our ability. Okay, so I'm going to read the script so I don't mess this up. Okay, take out your phones, take out your text function. Pull out your text function. In that text function, instead of texting to a phone number you're familiar with, text five to 52886, and in the subject part, put checkbook. So you're texting to the number 52886, and in the little part where you say, honey, I'll be home late tonight, put checkbook. Put checkbook. I'm going to give you a second to do that. If you do that, Take a look on the screen behind me for directions. You should be getting a link back at some point that you can click on to take action. If you get that link back and you think this is a cool idea that you'd like to see happen, click on that link. Now what that link should do, if it works, is just to give you an ability to send a message to your legislator by filling out a little small form saying, hey, I like checkbook.com. I think you should work to get it done. Now, as you do that, if you all do do that, and if the technology works, of course, it should start popping up little flags on who's sending it from where. So if you're from Monroe and you sent that, boom, we should see a flag up and from Monroe. No pressure, Terry Ball, but I'm watching you. Um, but I see someone on the, oh, someone just popped in from the 1012 corridor. Someone's in Baton Rouge. So this will kind of show around the state who's sending it into where. So it's a cool little premise. It goes to show you that, look, doesn't matter where you're from in the state, no matter what your political persuasion is, this is something that we need to look into doing here in Louisiana. It's exactly the type of transparency we need. So anyway, play with that while you're listening. Um, now we do have a little time for Q&A.